Neat, so at the end of the preceding video, I left you with an exercise where I suggested that you use the delta method to find the slope of the tangent for the curve that we've been working with where x is equal to negative one. And that was an exercise to help you get more familiar with the delta method. And we're going to work through the solution now, but as we work through the solution, I'm also going to derive from first principles the most common representation of the equation for differentiation. So this is gonna be pretty darn cool. All right, so our x1 value, so say for what we've been calling point P, that x value is going to be equal to negative one now instead of being equal to two, like it was in, in all the examples in the preceding video. And our y1 value, so the y value for P, we can calculate that by passing our x1 value through our f function from the preceding video, that f function being, uh, as a reminder, the equation of this line, y equals x squared plus two x plus two. So working with that same equation, just finding the slope at a new point with the delta method. So yes, so at that point p, our x value is negative one, our y value is positive one, therefore point p is located at <laughs> x is equal to negative one and y is equal to one. All right, so now we've already from the preceding video learned that if we make our delta x very, very small, as delta x approaches zero, it becomes obvious what the slope is at point P. So let's continue to work with the very, very small delta x that we had at the end of the preceding video. So this very, very small delta x, one times 10 to the power of negative six. Keep working with that and I mean, you could choose some other uh, value very, very close to zero yourself, and it should be equally obvious what the slope is at point P. But yeah, I'm gonna keep using this one. And so now let's make our point Q have an X value that differs from X1 by that delta X. So it is very, very close to negative one, but not quite negative one and we can pass that x value through our function f to calculate the y value of the point q. So now we know that our point q is going to have this, this value here. So x is very, very, very close to p at negative one, and the y is also very, very close to positive one, but not quite. And a quick aside here, which is pertinent to defining differentiation as an equation, which we'll do in a moment. An alternative way to calculate y2, this y2 value, would be to instead of calculating this intermediate step of x2, you could just pass x1 plus delta x, x1 plus delta x, right into our function f to give us y2. So we're doing in one line of code here what we were previously doing in two lines of code. But yeah, this is what we're going to use in the equation that we derive later on. And yes, of course, because of the way math works, whether we do it in two steps or one step, we of course get the exact same result. All right, so now that we have our Q location extremely close to P as it is, we can calculate a very representative slope for the point P. So using the same equation for the slope of a line that we used a number of times, at least three times in the preceding video, let's use that again here to calculate the slope M. And we can see that it's one times 10 to the negative six, which means that it's basically zero. So therefore, as X2, our x value for q becomes infinitely close to x1, our x value for p, it becomes clear that the slope m at point p, where x is equal to negative one, is equal to zero. So let's plot that out. We can use the same equation to find the y-intercept b for our line with this slope. And so we use the same equation a number of times in the preceding video we get our y-intercept of just a hair bigger than one. 
And then we can plot out our line by passing in our thousand X values using the M slope for our line that we just determined, using the Y intercept that we just determined and calculating our thousand Y points that correspond to our thousand X points. And then we can plot them out. And while we plot it out, you can't even see our point P anymore. So our point P is in there, but our point Q in orange has this specific Z order that means it's on top of the point P alongside the orange tangent line for that point P being out in front. And so as you can see, as Q becomes infinitely close to P and you know, as X2 minus X1, as the, the difference along the x-axis between Q and P approaches zero. In other words, as delta X approaches zero, remember that delta X is equal to X2 minus X1. So we can denote this in the limit notation that we focused on in the preceding segment. We can denote this delta X approaches zero as delta X approaches zero in limit notation. So using the delta method, we've now derived the definition of differentiation from first principles. So uh, the derivative of y, which we denote as dy, with respect to x, which we denote as dx, can be represented like this here. So the derivative of y, dy, with respect to x, dx, we put them as a fraction like this to indicate that with respect to. So the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the difference in y divided by the difference in x. Remember, this is our slope of a line equation m that we've used now many times recently in this notebook. So as our difference between our x values approaches zero, as our limit of delta x approaches zero, our slope of our line, it becomes equal to the slope of the line, it becomes equal to the derivative at whatever point we're interested in. So let's now make our way towards the most standard derivative equation. So in order to do that, let's expand delta y out to y2 minus y1, just as we could expand delta x to x2 minus x1. Of course, we can do the same with delta y, and we've already talked about that a number of times in this notebook, so I won't belabor it. Delta y is equal to y2 minus y1. And so <laughs> there you have it. We just make that simple substitution. All right, and then just one last step here, one final step. Let's replace y1 with f of x, so the x1 value, our point P, remember as we've done many times in this notebook, we can just pass that x1 value, that x value for point P into our function f, and that gives us the y value at our point P. So we're just substituting in f of x in for y1, like we've done many times in this notebook already, and then we replace y2 with f of x plus delta x, which is what we just talked about earlier in this video, this idea right here. We could calculate y2 with f of x plus delta x. So that is what we're doing right here. Our y2 value, the y value for our point Q is equal to f of x plus delta x. So now making those two substitutions, replacing y1 with fx, y2 with f of x plus delta x, we now have the most common representation of differentiation, which I showed you in the slide in the preceding video when I introduced that we were going to be tackling the delta method. So as one last hands-on exercise here, let's observe this differentiation equation in action so that you can really get a working understanding of what it means to calculate a derivative, to calculate the slope of a line using the delta method. So let's wrap 
what we have here into a function. So we've got in our denominator, we've got our delta. And then in the numerator, we have f of x plus delta x, f of x plus delta x, minus f of x minus f of x. So putting this expression here into a function, and I'm calling that function differentiation demo. We can pass in a function, we can pass in an x value, and we can pass in a particular delta. Speaking of particular deltas, I'm now creating a list of ever shrinking deltas so that our delta x can get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller so that as our delta x approaches zero, it becomes clear what the slope is at whatever point we're interested in. So then we can have a for loop, which loops over our equation here and we have a fixed function. So the same function that we've been using throughout this video. So the function for this curve here. And we also are going to solve for the slope at the point where x is equal to two, which is what we did earlier on in the preceding video. We were solving for the slope where x is equal to two. So now let's do that using our neat function here. So as our deltas get smaller, our curve gets closer and closer to the true value, the true slope of the curve at the point where x is equal to two. So some of these values are the ones that we calculated in the earlier examples in the preceding videos, but we have a lot more values here. You can see this fact that as delta x approaches zero, our slope, our derivative of y with respect to x approaches the true value of six. And as a second example, we can do the same thing at our point where x is equal to negative one. So this is the example that we solved most recently here. We can see that as the difference between p and q as the delta x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, our estimate of the slope becomes more and more accurate. It gets closer and closer and closer to zero, which as it happens is the example that we kicked off this entire notebook with. So right at the very top, when we were working with this curve of y equals x squared plus two x plus two, and we were interested in finding the slope right here. And so we zoomed in on that point when we were talking about the calculus of the infinitesimals earlier on. And we said, well, it looks like the slope at this point where x is equal to negative one is pretty flat. And so now not only have we seen it visually, but we have calculated it definitively using the standard delta method equation to calculate it. So there you go. Wow, what a journey. We've gone from understanding what limits are to using limits to develop a working understanding of the delta method, a tried and true approach to finding the slope of a curve at any given point, in other words, the curve's derivative. Up next is a quick video on derivative notation. To be sure not to miss the next video in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. And finally, you can follow me on Twitter too if that's your social medium of choice.